you know, by the time Arthur is through speaking, there isn't too much left to say. You know, um, he is, um, you know, Leonard has become a political symbol, and he's a very important symbol of how Indian people, Native American people have been treated since the very beginning. Um, but he's more than that. You know, Leonard is a good guy. He's a really good guy. And the way that we met him was that he had a automotive shop. He was a uh, auto body worker and mechanic, and he had a very professional shop up in Seattle in the South End. And we heard about him because our movement vehicles were always broken down. We always had transportation problems. And we heard about this uh, Indian up in Seattle that would help people. And so um, Allison and I made a trip from down to Squally. We uh, went up to Seattle. And the shop was an eight-bay shop. Four bays for uh, auto body work and painting, and four bays for uh, mechanical work. But when we walked in, both of us just jumped back. We were startled and scared because we were at war, struggling for our, our tribal and native and individual rights. And this whole shop was full of cop cars because he had the contract to take care of uh, the Seattle Police Department cars. That's how good he was. That's how pro he was. And um, we laid it out. We told him, this is what we're doing. You know, we've got uh, armed fishing camps. We're protecting our fishermen. And we've got to get from here to there. We've got court. We've got speaking gigs we need to do. We've got to be able to get around. And um, Leonard pitched in and helped us. And when we got to know him later now, um, if a grandpa from Sioux country had a uh, busted... Um, some kind of a belt or something, or if some grandma had a flat tire, any Indian, out of gas, whatever, you know, Leonard would just go help him out of his pocket. He always did that. And when we had our uh, fishing camp down here at Piala, you know, he used to uh, come down and he'd tell me, not to be so serious. Come on, come on, let's go party. Let's go have some fun. Why are you always so serious? I know you like to dance. Come on. And I said, no, I got 300 people here that I'm trying to keep fed and keep out of trouble, and I, I can't go play. He said, ah, oh, you're always so serious. And that's how he was. He liked to have fun and uh, work on cars and help people. That's that's just the kind of guy he was. Always big smile. We were uh, at Fort Lawton, and these boys, uh, Gary Bray and uh, David, uh, his brother, had uh, scouted the route. They had scar scouted the route to get to the back side of Fort Lawton. And so now it's time for us to do our little invasion. So we park and we go down to follow their route. But they was Colville Indians. They didn't know about tides. And their route was on the beach. Think about this. The route was on the beach. Colville Indians don't know tides. We got down there and our route was like this deep. So uh, we had to go uh, through, well, 
we thought we had to go. <laughs> anyway, we uh, we had to go through these people's uh, yards, and they had fences between each one, and they had bulkheads, and so. Uh, I happened to go through with the bunch Leonard went through with. I, I was a lot lighter then. I weighed about 110 pounds. But every time we'd come to a fence, Leonard would pick me up and lift me over the fence. <laughs> and then when we got to the bottom of the bluff, we had to climb that long, uh, long hill up. And so there we were. Uh, hanging off a steep embankment all night um, and uh, Leonard was there and those of you that have seen the film As Long as the Rivers Run Leonard's the one with the headband standing by the teepee and he was a kid I mean he was just a young guy um, I don't know how old he was when he was locked up, but Arthur knows everything. He's the uh, Google of Leonard. How old was he? 31, 32 maybe? How old he is now? Subtract 37. Yeah, we were all kids. I could climb bluffs then, so you know we were kids. But, uh, you know, he was just, I don't think he was even there because of the political issues. He just loved his Indian people. He just really, really loved his Indian people. And so wherever we were, there he was because he just liked to be with his people. And so when... Uh, when Dick Wilson's goons started um, burning down the elders' houses and tossing the traditional vehicles and impounding everything and shooting people and killing people, uh, there was a call. There was a call for help. And it was the elders and the traditionals. They said, we need security. We need security here. We need eyes. We need witnesses. And so um, Leonard did exactly what you would know that he would do. He went. It was Indian people. It was elders. They needed help. They needed more than a fan belt. They needed more than a tire. They, they needed physical bodies there protecting them from having their houses burned down and being beat up and being arrested and dragged. So Leonard went and we didn't even realize he went, did we Sue? He just went and you know talk about the least likely Indian to be violent. He was tender-hearted. He was a real kind-hearted man. And um, the next thing we heard, you know, all of this had happened. Now we knew that 83 Indians were murdered back there with no investigation whatsoever. No investigations, no arrests, no convictions. Just a whole bunch of Indians murdered, and nobody gave a damn, and nobody did anything about it. But what we heard then was that uh, Leonard had been arrested. We were, I was shocked. I mean, that, uh, this wasn't a troublemaker. This wasn't, I mean, not that we're troublemakers, but know what I mean. I mean, he, he, he was the one most likely to go buy a case of soda pop or a case of beer for whoever was there. He was the least likely to get involved in a shootout. And so uh, we were involved in some of the court stuff. Um, I went back to Kansas City, uh, Missouri. Um, well, we all went to uh, Canada to try to block the extradition, but then uh, 
I was one of the witnesses for him in Kansas City, Missouri. And you know, when you're in court and someone's on trial, the court does not allow any comments, any <sighs> or anything, no, no sound effects whatsoever allowed. But when I was testifying, the FBI families were there splashing tears, moaning, groaning, making comments out loud. Uh, they were not excluded from the court. They were permitted to do a whole show of their disdain, disgust, hatred, sorrow, whatever, and uh, an emote they did, there were about 20 of them just carrying on, and um, it should have been thrown out. Just for that, it should have been thrown out. It should have been overturned. You know, all of this has just been so unfair. And, it, you know, if you guys for one second think you're not making a difference, you know, know you are. Know that all over the world, all over the world, all over the United States and all over Canada, there are gatherings like this. You know, people who care, people who miss him, people who love him. And that's the... I'm pretty certain that the government grabbed him, singled him out, and identified him because they believed that hmm, urban Indian here on the reservation, nobody's going to miss him. Nobody will miss this urban Indian that just happened to be on the reservation. I think they really thought they could just disappear him. And what they didn't get is you know, if you, whatever you put out, that's what you get back. And this was a man that loved his people. He, he loved his people, and that love has grown. And we miss him. We miss him. We love him. And people can feel that, they know that about him. He's, um, he is a symbol. He is a symbol of all of the ways we've been treated. Of the genocide, the Holocaust, the imprisonments, the, all of the assaults against us by every arm of the government. Every single arm of the government, any government, local, the tiniest little local government, you know, he is a symbol of that. But I'm, I'm glad you all know he's more than that. And I'm glad that the thousand other locations that are having rallies like this know that too. And so I'll just say all my relations.